it's time to talk about nifa so if you're living in karnataka you'll be aware of the situation that there has been a viral outbreak in calicut region of kerala and a week back in mangalore region of karnataka and there have been deaths in kerala there have been 13 deaths and in karnataka mangalore there have been two deaths so it's a right time to get a proper understanding of this because it might be important for your upcoming entrance exams and as a citizen of india as well now what's nifa virus nifa virus is an rna virus it's a single stranded rna virus which is negative sense now when you look at the structure you're supposed to be reminded of paramyxoviruses because it belongs to the family paramyxoviridae and it belongs to the genus henipa henipa viruses now why is it actually called nifa first encountered in nifa region of malaysia and hence it was dubbed the name nifa virus depending upon the location where it was encountered now how does it spread not clear actually so imagine there are fruit bats it started with fruit bats of the family pteropods pteropods okay and there are some other micro bats as well so fruit bats and it said that they are the cause of transmitting it to humans but then again once there was an outbreak in india where there were three deaths and it was suspected that it was human to human spread and then there is a chance that fruit bats might spread to pigs or pigs might get it de novo and infect humans so anyway the primary casualty seem to be humans now in 1997 there was an outbreak among pig farmers the pigs contracted this virus niv nifa virus and pigs started showing encephalitis that is inflammation of the brain then because of this workers died in 2 years there were 10 deaths of encephalitis and because of this pigs were killed how many 1 million that's 10 to the power 6 okay this is the reason why it has become important okay 1997 it was first discovered in the pig killing accident in 1999 now genomically you are going to see a single stranded rna virus which is enveloped lipid bilayer envelope viral rna in helical arrangement so basic introduction would be it's a single stranded rna negative sense which has helical nucleic acid paramyxoviridae family henipa genus and lipid bilayer rest all and it's closely related to one more virus called the hendra virus okay this is important in treatment part which i'll get to later but remember that hendra virus which also belongs to the same family is closely resembling the nipah virus so hendra virus one more important thing now it was said that bats were supposed to be the reservoir how did they get to it because when they detected the antibodies the bats tested positive to anti nipah antibodies and hence it was confirmed that it goes for bats then they confirmed that the same thing phenomena was seen in pigs as well but recently according to newspaper article there was a lab in bhopal there has been a lab in bhopal which has said that bats and pigs are not the carriers or the causes of the nifa virus outbreak in india currently because they found the antibodies to be lacking in the bat samples which they had taken so again it might be a false negative it's not sure but i just felt like mentioning the article which was presented now in hendra as well the reservoirs are bats now when we come to how it presents so the clinical features the signs and symptoms initially it has two ways it starts as a flu so when you have a flu you have fever drowsiness okay you we'll have malaise generalized weakness and then it can lead to complications such as coma or encephalitis or sometimes both okay and respiratory problems as well because again we are dealing with paramyxoviridae so respiratory infections are not uncommon and it spreads via contact 
Now the viral RNA when you take it from any sample so these are the symptoms now what you have to do you have to diagnose how the patient has you got the clinical features now if there is an outbreak zone and you get a patient coming with these symptoms you have to send him for diagnosis the diagnosis currently mainly depends upon analyzing the sample which you get now the virus has been able to be seen in the saliva urine of the bats so and carriers as well so if you get a carrier or if you suspect that you can send saliva or throat swabs or urine for real time pcr okay to detect the viral rna if it is present or not the sample will be containing viral rna or again sputum sample as well now since it is a respiratory infection yes sputum sample will test positive but these are more reliable then there is also possible that you can send blood for investigation but then again you have to send it for antibody detection not for rna detection now for this you need specialized equipment which are being imported currently so you got the clinical features now you got the sample collection and then we have something called risk of exposure okay now this is important if you are dealing with it in community medicine social preventive medicine aspects who are at more risks the people who are exposed to bats which bats again terpoids now if you look at this map these are where the nifa viruses have been seen for an outbreak again we have to include kerala because this is an old map okay there have been nifa outbreaks here as well then these are the places where hendra viruses have been seen to be outbroken and now if you notice the bigger line which showing us the boundary this is the range where the fruit bats can be found and you can see that the nifa outbreaks fall well within the range of the fruit bats teropus okay so the high risk will be people living in this region rather than the people in, living in other regions so like africa and america and a good part of england and a good part of australia as well so people living in this area are more exposed okay then again it's also noted that people dealing with pigs are more prone for encephalitic complications and people involved in preparation of toddy which is like a liquor which is made from plant sap again those people are also more likely to catch it if there is an outbreak because these form a relationship with the fruit bats okay they drink this and then they urinate in this releasing the virus into the toddy reservoirs now time initially if, if you look at the number of outbreaks okay between 2001 and 2018 there have been total of eight outbreaks and most of them occurred in the time of january to feb now we are seeing an outbreak in may that to end of may so there was a seasonal variation for this we used to see it more during the time of jan feb max march now we are seeing it in may so there has been a change in trend now how do you treat this how do you treat this currently no treatment is present there has been a subunit vaccine from hendra virus okay that's why i said hendra is important because they give cross protection okay there's a g protein of hendra virus now that provides cross protection but then again it has been only successful in vitro there have been no clinical effects which have been observed so that to suggest that hendra g protein subunit vaccine is going to help us in case of a nif outbreak so again this scratch down some reports had said that chloroquine which we use in malaria treatment prevent some essential processes of nif virus that deal with its replication and all those again clinically not helpful when you use it on human test subjects then there was a thing which said that you can provide ribavirin that's what they are currently doing in the outbreak zones they have started treatment with ribavirin which is an antiviral 
but then again in vitro tests only not clearly in clinically it has not helped till now but then again something is better than nothing and finally we have passive immunity so that is to give in anti nifa virus antibodies directly to the patient so that also exists but then again we are not clearly sure on how much and how well it's going to do because it has to be produced and currently the only supplier of this monoclonal antibody seems to be australia yeah so how are you going to protect yourself from it protection first thing that people are recommended to do if you are a healthcare worker is practice barrier nursing that is to keep your contact with the patient to a bare minimum so you are wearing masks you are wearing goggles you are wearing your biohazard suits okay that type of limit limiting of your contact with the patient to prevent human to human contact okay first thing to practice if you are a healthcare worker second avoid areas where there are these fruit bats avoid toddy during this outbreak avoid contact with pigs any fallen fruits which might be infected any place where bats come and go if there are places where the bats can urinate avoid that okay because that's how it's spreading the urinate in the toddy reservoirs and people later drink it and then again okay so all the general things which you practice as common sense like washing your hands washing your foot avoiding dirty places these has to be given more care to at this period okay if there are bats around you be careful and practice barrier nursing if you are a healthcare worker so hope this video helped on how to be safe